Welcome everyone. Um, this is going to be my LiPo battery conversion video. Of course, I don't ever script anything and so you'll just have to get what you get here. This is my mower and over here on the workbench, this is the batteries that I'm using and of course I've got four of them. And all four have been pre-charged during this previous week. I charged each one of them with a 12 volt charger first. Then I connected them parallel, let them sit for a couple days, and tried the 12 volt charger again and it didn't do anything. All my voltages are 14.1 uh, at this point in time. Uh, some of the other things that I can note here is that's going to be my new charger. Um, this is a few of the tools and stuff I've got. I'm going to be changing out my, or adding this additional charge port. I'm using the XT60s because I've got XT60s on everything, including my electric bike. Uh, a couple of screwdrivers, Phillips and regular. I don't know if I'll need them. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to show you... Uh, the rear axle fluid change i've got a, a six millimeter uh, allen wrench there and the fluid it takes eight and a half ounces so it's just kind of a guess i'll put it in uh the wrenches i don't know what all i'm going to need i got two 13 millimeters and a 10 millimeter and a, the same thing on the sockets i got a couple of sockets and a quarter inch ratchet and on my drill or on my impact gun I've got a Torx 30 tip for the uh, the covers on the mower so I've got a few things to set up here again here's the mower oh I also measured the height of the the battery tray it happens to be about 12 and a half inches with the tires the way I've got them set up you know normal pressure so I went and found me something that was 12 inches tall. I just happened to have this bucket this 12 inches tall that I'll be resting the battery tray on. First off, I'm going to go ahead and drain, start draining the axle fluid. Um, that requires this six millimeter wrench, Allen wrench. And as you can see, I've cut a milk container off and I'm putting the Allen wrench in here <clears throat> this one wasn't too tight loosen it up okay that's draining while I'm working on the battery let me get started on this thing Removing the rear cover, the four screws. I already set the emergency brake. Just drop these right down here in that little slot. I guess first would be a good idea to disconnect the battery. I'm using power tools just to speed things up a little bit. Uh, disconnect the battery temperature sensor. And verify everything else is disconnected. Okay. Let's find 
the battery tray out. At this point, I found that it's easier to release the brake. Is left holding the tray onto the mower. The rear supported. Ta da! There's the batteries. The factory, the factory cables are all held on with 10 millimeters. I'm just going to set them right down here. This is the sensor for my aftermarket gauge. So I can just flop this out of the way. Take my battery separator out. Get all my junk out of the way. My mower is the has the 75 amp hour batteries in it which are a little bit shorter than most of them. I think these will just lift out. Oh, yeah. Get these out of the way. Uh, as I'm taking the batteries out, like I said, these are the 75 amp hour batteries. They weigh 49 pounds each. So, real close to... 200 pounds of battery here. Okay. So, the new batteries are longer. So, I've, we got to adjust each one of these stops. Gotta loosen up all the bolts, the nuts. Okay, install the new batteries. The new batteries are quite a bit lighter. As you can see, I've got a long way to go here. Okay. So you can see that I wasn't prepared for this, but the tray doesn't go all the way back as far as I need it to do. So I'm going to have to loosen these other ones out. By removing the one nut, it looks like it's going to give me the correct spacing for the battery. I'm going to do the other side. Well, how about that? It's not going to fit. Okay, that gets me where I need to be. So, in summary, because a lot of this will be sped up through, the front bracket and bolts need to be removed. See that? The front bracket and the bolts need to be removed for the 100 amp hour batteries. Let's take 
these two back out. I forgot to do the rear axle fluid. Okay, going back to the rear axle fluid. Got to remove the top plug. This one seems to be tighter. An old mechanic's trick. Just to put a wrench on the Allen wrench. Like so. can put the bottom plug back in. Okay, this says eight and a half ounces. You should be able to go through the hole in the top there. There's my eight and a half ounces of fluid. Put the plug back in the axle. it up with the Allen wrench. You can even align the paint marks if you want to because at least mine had paint marks on it. Now wipe it off a little bit. And rear axle fluid is done. Now just putting the cables back on it. Uh, these batteries have a little bit larger bolts in them, so we'll have to see. It looks like the cables are good. Let's get one here. I moved the main battery cable from the front to the rear for easier access to install my new charging port. Okay, I got my battery terminals hooked up. Everything hooked up. Let's check my gauge. Yeah, my gauge says 56.42 volts. Woohoo! So, I am ready to put it back in. I'm just putting those in tight enough to snug the batteries in, keep them from sliding back and forth. That seems to be about right. Use two wrenches to lock the bolts in. Okay. Slide the battery tray in. Watching for wires, of course. Seat down. Move some of this crap out of the way. 